Minecraft 1.20 is here, which means it's time to update my hardcore world to the new version. However, I have a few things I need to do before that happens to fully prepare for the update. I'm going to need even more technical farms for brand new blocks before exploding the nether to craft a ton of netherite tools, all to start on a new tale within this 4,000 day hardcore Minecraft world. Leave a like on this episode if you're hyped for 1.20 and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so I come completely forgot this was coming in 1.20 but bamboo is now a full wood type which is fantastic and it'll be great for building starting my preparations to upgrade to 1.20 i need a huge bamboo farm to keep collecting the stuff as i have like none i really like the idea of the industrial district having a lot of different farms so as much as i don't want to spend time to dig another big hole i'm gonna need to dig an 18 block deep hole to fit a massive bamboo farm inside Wait, what? No, oh, no, no, no. How, how did I miscalculate? No, <laughs> why am I in the copper aging box? That's not good at all. Oh, it comes over to here. Okay, if we just cut down this side, I still get 13 blocks. My whole plan is ruined. What do I do? I think, I guess, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. We just dig this down with a new pickaxe. This farm is already going to produce so much bamboo, so this should be totally fine with the smaller space. Did I dig like an extra 2,000 blocks for no reason? Probably. Well, thinking about what to do next, I did organize a few shulker boxes. I mean, it's a start here. These are all empty now. Be proud of me. Well, let's refocus on the farm. Crafting down quite a few stacks of rails and powered rails. Next, I need some redstone from the cleric villagers. Ow now to power all of the rails this should be enough blocks of redstone each bamboo shoot produces roughly 15 bamboo per harvest so a minecart hopper is going to fill up extremely fast so i decided to go across with a new minecart track every four rows to make sure i can collect everything there we go that is a lot of rails laid down i did run out of redstone again so bow back down to the clerics where hopefully i can just keep buying more redstone dust that should hopefully be enough redstone i'm gonna need a lot of repeaters and comparators but i'm out of quartz which we can get from our piggies that should do it for those two next a ton of droppers and thankfully i already have tons of observers and pistons which we can turn into sticky pistons from here i need to set up a minecart unloader from each of the points that goes into an item dropper to move the items out of the farm there go all of the unloading systems now i just need to make a system for all of the droppers down here i need a little bit more space The minecart system's now in place, minus the minecarts. But I've started working on a water channel down here where we can take some water and pack ice at the end, the scaffolding, and more. Nope water i'm actually gonna be a little safe on these because i'm not too sure how far the items are gonna shoot out to the side so i want to make sure that no ice is right next to one of the droppers because we might lose items and that brings us to nearly the end we'll figure out a place to store the items soon but for now i just want to get them up to the surface water at the top soul sand at the bottom and kelp goes brrr and i go woo 11 hopper minecarts going in here and this will complete the entire item collection system minus chests to store it all in and now a layer of grass blocks going on top of the rails for the bamboo to grow on with that done next up i need to add some frog lights around the entire outer edge this is actually perfect as right here in the center is block light level eight and bamboo can apparently only grow at seven or higher for right, next up on this i need to build a flying machine to go across the entire layer we start with a polis deep slate here we can extend ourselves all the way into the middle to meet another slime block line there sticky pistons in to move the thing and we're gonna need a few observers looking up now to make sure this thing doesn't move when i remove the stone i put some furnaces on both sides because they're not movable something like this this should work to power it for now and we'll hook it up to a hopper clock later following that guy down here we need a machine to catch it and send it back that should work well only one way to see if this thing actually works remove the furnace in front and that did not send it no no it actually did not at all and there we go the machine is off and i need to fix the other side before it breaks itself and set that to one tick limbo out no limbo no under 
Thank you. And it's coming back. <laughs> I need to get out of the way. Next, so that this isn't running just constantly, I want to come back here and hook up a hopper clock so that this runs much, much less often. This should work. And then I'm going to add four stacks of slabs right now that'll very slowly move over. But just to verify it is working, let's take most of these and just plop them in. That'll flip back and then the machine goes. Perfect. And that'll just keep running enough until it swaps back over. Now to fill this farm up with some bamboo. Where I have any? Four. I have four bamboo. Ah, we do have bamboo. Nice. Now I just need to run along and fill out the entire farm. I'm gonna need a lot more bamboo for this. Quick trip out to the jungle to gather up a little bit more bamboo. That should be plenty to finish it off. There we go. Our entire field of bamboo is now planted in. And as you can see, the farm is already working really, really well. Not only is bamboo flying out of the item transportation system, it's also just flying out of the farm. I kind of like the idea of building this massive underbelly where you can see all of the farms when we're walking through some cool tunnels or something like that. Oh, nailed it. Clean, flying all the way through. Who says I need a bigger entrance into this cave? But what I do want to do is smelt down an entire shulker of sand into some glass. Well, that's melting down. I'm also going to get a ton of sunflowers, which we can craft down into yellow dye, which I can use to craft yellow stained glass. With the yellow stained glass ready, I started to stack up all of the walls to keep more of the bamboo inside the farm, where we now have a fountain of bamboo that might be running a little too often i think we could slow it down this is a good farm that's a lot of bamboo coming in <laughs> for this we're gonna need a lot of chests so let's craft down quite a few here and i think this will be set up inside the basement of a building that's gonna go right along this edge of the street here so we don't have to bring it all the way up but for now we'll do something to about here i'm thinking we do five rows of double chests and just see how many of these we can fill in i need more chests okay if only i can make them out of bamboo dark oak will have to do for now Something tells me we're going to have a little bit of extra bamboo. So even with all of these chests right over here, I need some fire at the end to burn it. But there we go. A completed bamboo farm. The timer was way too quick. So I swapped over to a new system here. That'll be a daylight sensor that will look for it once every single time we either hit daytime or nighttime and it'll send it off. For now, I'm going to hook up. So every single time we reach the morning, the machine will set off and that should happen every time we sleep at home. So it should be running fairly consistently. This way, we'll at least get a decent amount of height out of some of the bamboo before we harvest it with the bamboo farm completed we'll worry about hiding that thing later as there's a much more pressing matter to attend to netherite tools are becoming a lot more difficult to get thanks to the addition of netherite upgrade templates so i'm trying to upgrade as many tools as i can before 1.20 arrives the goal is to fill two shulker boxes of maxed out netherite tools so i decided to stream to start off a new netherite mining journey and i'm gonna need a ton of sand headed over to the gas farm i did grab it as a little gunpowder as I could get to craft this all down into TNT. Now, one extra step for safety, I grabbed fire resist potions from the piglin bartering stations, then went back to the overworld to turn them into eight minute potions using some redstone. Ready to go with a ton of TNT and potions, it's time to get mining. Flying around to the nether, I dug down to a new spot around Y14 to start digging around to get ready for a massive TNT explosion. Clearing out the lava with a fire resist potion so I can go as far as possible in each tunnel. First tunnel wasn't so great, so I started digging a second one one and found a ton more debris right away more tnt placed down another explosion and more debris to gather up at this point i had got it into a pretty good rhythm placing down all of the tnt and exploding to open up new tunnels to reveal even more of the debris I'm starting to think spending the diamonds on netherite upgrade templates so I don't have to do this now might be worth it, as I could just do it later. But that wouldn't be very Minecraft YouTuber rage bait of about a new feature of me, so here I am still mining more to get all of the debris I'm gonna need. That brings us back to present day, about four hours later. And I now have a total of 194 ancient debris, bringing my total ancient debris mine to 642. I'll put these in the blast furnaces for now to smelt on down. Next, we're going to need a ton of diamond tools to be able to upgrade them all. Thankfully, I can get all of the tools. Ow, ow, ow. 
really cheap down in the villager trading hall up at our toolsmith villager trading hall that i kind of forgot to build i've got space for five more villagers and we've got quite a few down here what are you doing down on the ground buddy now for the fun task of grabbing a few villagers pausing them here and do you want to be a toolsmith what about an armor smith we'll let him think on that for a few as to get started on this villager trading hall one i want to tear out the floor and well completely redo the entire space Here I'm thinking we grab basalt and smooth basalt just for a little bit of variation in the floor itself. That's an improvement. And now I'm not really too sure what I was thinking with the granite wall over here. Let's tear out all of the granite and replace it with deep slate tile. And I think I'm going to put the armor smiths over here so they're just a little separated from all the tool smiths. The polished granite, I'm just going to exchange for some deep slate bricks. This is starting to look pretty good in here. Next, let's tear out the ceiling to replace it with a bunch of strip mangrove logs. Now for a little bit of lighting, I'm thinking we can go almost futuristic here with some end rods. Few extra little chains. And now we just need to get some villagers inside. But this is already looking so much better with a little storage. New rails are set up over here. And I'm gonna divide the villagers just a touch so the trades go don't get any more expensive. Our first toolsmith is ready to go. So we can send him off to the zombie. He's all good and up you go. Second toolsmith and toolsmith number three. Off you go. Anytime now, buddy anytime now you want to be an armor smith you look like you want to be an armor smith yay great here we have all five villagers and i'm hoping i can just get them on one side even though he's not really in a stall but if i just toss this here then we can gear every single one of them perfect i'm out of potions though i'm just gonna brew up a few more while we're waiting looks like our villagers are ready to be members of society let's send them on their way the rail line should be hooked up to get them all the way to the top hopefully otherwise i'm chasing them down who knows where and perfect our two new toolsmiths have arrived and off go the armor smiths goodbye and just like that everybody's home which means i need to start taking some emeralds and unlocking them all the way And there we have it fully maxed out with an unbreaking three efficiency three diamond pick we've got a silk touch shovel here and a silk touch pick that's pretty nice and some pretty bad diamond gear that i'm gonna buy just to upgrade them well look at that chest piece that's pretty good for four emeralds now for the low low price of one emerald i'm able to buy as many diamond tools as i need i decided to fill the entire shulker box full of pickaxes then grabbed a half shulker of shovels and finished off the last with hoes and axes i can't believe i got all of this for 54 emeralds that's a little nuts now for the armor this is a bonus if i have enough netherite so i grabbed two sets there let's go upgrade everything to netherite where all the scraps are definitely smelted down by now and hopefully i have gold I have five. I can't believe I have more netherite scraps than I have gold. So I just sit here for a second. 10 minutes later, and that's going to be plenty of gold. Allergies are kicking my butt today. So if I sound a little weird, I do apologize. But I'm very happy to say we now have 48 netherite ingots, which isn't enough but it's a lot looks pretty cool. Since I am completely out of gold, I decided to stick around and craft up as much as I could get. And now, with the extra netherite I had in storage, we've done it. We have completed the netherite beacon. This is the top level of Minecraft gaming you come here for, I'm sure. I see everybody's complaining about. This thing didn't take that long at all. It was like three hours. Psh, everybody can get one. With all the extras, I do have almost two stacks of ingots, which is pretty sweet. And that means we can probably upgrade everything in here to netherite. This is a really cool feeling to just upgrade two shulker boxes of diamond tools to netherite tools just like that. I usually just get my one set of tools and maybe a few extra pickaxes and call it good but this is going to help out so much with big projects still have 70 netherite ingots left which means we can definitely upgrade the extra armor sets and i've still got six blocks left now i upgraded all of the tools first because it increases their enchanting level so using a grindstone over here we can remove the enchantments they have currently and trying again at the enchanting table we should be able to get some really big enchants like that guy now it's time to just go through the entire list and see what we can get down to level 28 now and this is how many pretty decent pickaxes we have so far we'll put the rest back in the box for now nothing a quick trip over to the raid farm won't be able to fix
a few minutes later and we're at level 163 and we have hero of the village five well i have the buff and i'm thinking about it we should probably come down here and get a few of our enchanted books from the librarians because the prices are very cheap efficiency four for three emeralds yes please nearly a full shulker of mending books efficiency four as well ran out of books but i do have hero of the village are they gonna throw me things i am your savior I put you in these boxes, but I'm your savior. Thank you for the book. Please throw more. A book. Another book. It's probably faster just to break these. Full shulker of mending books and some extras. Full shulker of efficiency four and fortune three and unbreaking three in here. It is going to cost a lot more levels to put them on manually. So we're still going to try the enchanting tower. Now for the fun part, rolling enchantments on the tools to get some good ones. If I'm not getting at least two enchants, I'm just clearing it and retrying again. I'm hoping for at least efficiency four and unbreaking three at minimum on each of the tools. So then I can add in mending silk touch and fortune as I need from there. First round of enchants are all done and I've got all of our silk touch pickaxes in here. We've got some extras right down there. The fortune three pickaxes are all over here with their extras as needed pose we got one silk touch three fortune three and two without shovels we've got a ton of silk touch we've got two fortunes which i'm never going to use and a bunch of these guys for the axes i only got one silk touch and one fortune three and everything else was just efficiency four unbreaking three and i really can't complain too much but what i would like to do is build a new shulker box so let's take you you're pretty good and you and i think we can start to upgrade a few of these tools to fully max them out and throw some mending on top something tells me i'm gonna need a lot more levels to make all of this happen efficiency five oh only six levels three maxed out silk touch pickaxes and three matched out fortune three pickaxes now i've got a ton of tools in here that are all gonna need really cool names so leave a comment down below with some ideas for me and i'll pick some of the best ones and rename these guys once i get a few more levels we'll come through and upgrade all these but i definitely want those three hoes probably th three silk touch shovels three without anything and mending's pretty cheap so maybe i can sneak this on all of them i need one level oh man and perfect no love <laughs> enough levels are here in the vertices perfectly at zero levels but this shulker box of backup tools is looking pretty good it's time to put these new tools to work a long time ago i created this castle inside of it i started to store world maps from different timestamps inside of this series i want to not only update the map for a final time before 1.20 but i also want to give this a little bit more of an official home to create a massive map room and cave system within the mountain to keep it at one a little more organized and honestly just look better sorry one moment please torch looks like i've set a beacon right here before so uh we could just do, use this spot again with the haste beacon all ready to go i got to work carving out a tunnel in the mountain that i can use to create this massive map room some of the older maps are only five by five or seven by five but to keep this streamlined for the bigger maps that i know are coming in the future i want to create sections that are 13 wide and about seven tall to allow for the expansion and a bit of a border around it here we have the entire first section cleared out and it's gonna be big but i think if for the first map we were to cut out like a oh an emerald but a five by five area somewhere in here to put the first one and then after that i did upgrade to the seven by five so we can throw that here and we just keep expanding as we go i thought another section for two more maps would look really good to lead in so i continued mining that out until i got the idea for a grand central chamber where the official most updated map would sit on the floor in the middle as a centerpiece for this tunnel system where i'm hoping this is enough space in here to fit everything and still be able to decorate i actually have five maps currently so i did dig out this extra side over here and we can add it in or something like that now behind all the maps so we don't have any weird lighting issues i want to put frog lights specifically the pearlescent ones and there's still a few left in the farm hopefully that'll be enough now since i'm here in the nether i might as well repair my tools and now i just need to replace the back of every single map section with the brand new frog lights That is a lot brighter in here already, but I think it's about time we can start actually moving some of the maps in place. Once we decorate a little bit more, I'll move the signs on the walls. But for now, as date markers, we can do something like that. All the signs are in and so are the maps. Just uh, an hour later. <laughs> yeah but what we can do next is actually start to decorate the back walls that are going to be kind of holding in the maps i'm thinking we do acacia planks here along the bottom for a strong contrast and then right above that we're going to be going into some cyan wool partially because i have too many of them i kind of want to try warped warp blocks in here to see how it would look 
First side's done, and I think I like that. You can maybe make the sign pop a little bit more like that and darken the pillars in the roof, and that should be really cool. First hallway's finished up for the back walls, and I think it looks pretty good. And there goes the second hall, which is ready for a new map and an expansion to the map. But first, pillars. Deep slate for the base, mangrove planks as a divider, and then strip mangrove logs up to the top. Yep, I think I'm gonna like this. It's really starting to come together. But it's time to fly around the world and update the map once more before the 1.20 update drops, expanding it to hopefully include the mountain range and flower forest village transformation I've completed recently. And here it is, finally the newly expanded Banded map updated with the village and locked in forever as a memory within this world june 2023 episode 37. the maps might be different size but just look at the difference between episode 3 and episode 37 in this part of the world this is going to be an evolving project so if you have any ideas on what we can add into this room the floor the ceiling whatever we should do let me know but 1.20 is fast approaching and i got things to wrap up like the fact that i'm in debt dirt debt i've mined a total of of 97,921 dirt in this world. But I still owe another 5,000 or so dirt from the sub goal a few episodes back, and I want to clean that off before 1.20 gets here. Meaning I have five shulker boxes of dirt that I need to fill up with a little bit of mining over here in the snowy taiga. Weirdly enough, this is one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft. Just brrrr your way through the train, gathering everything in sight and not having to think too much. It's almost like a little meditation for me. And that fills up three shulker boxes almost of dirt and almost one of grass but i need to reach 102,818 dirt mine currently i am at 102,068 why do we need to have 800 left to go that should just about do it as we filled up another box all of the grass is there and some bonus dirt bringing us to a hundred and three thousand six hundred extra and we now have two cats living in the dirt quarry i should get some fish and bring them home only the freshest fish for the kitties there's a third one up here hi buddy no 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 wait how did a black cat get up here get back here you stupid cat the fishies you can guard the front gate here oh i guess you're like a bluey color huh jelly can guard the copper factory and you buddy can guard the dirt storage room from creepers i'm very happy i did this challenge as we have one two three four and a little into the fifth double chests of dirt Ooh, new terraforming project coming soon Quick sidetrack before the next project. Need a little sugar cane to craft paper as I'm nearly out of rockets again. So down inside of the mountain, I need a little gun power to go with it. Four more firework rockets. This will keep me flying for a while. And I almost forgot, I need to blend field. Imagine if I forgot to blend a field on the final episode in Minecraft 1.19. That'd just be so sad. Like imagine if you weren't subscribed and you missed new uploads on the hardcore series. I'm just kidding. I made that joke last time, but I really did almost forget to plant this field. So I'm glad I remembered just before finishing off the episode. And there we have a brand new carrot field. This area of the world is starting to look pretty cool. Okay, I feel pretty bad about this one. There's still an advancement I haven't completed in Minecraft 1.19. Killing a mob near a skulk catalyst. Cool. That was easy. 1.19 is done. Nah, I'm just kidding. I really love these skulk blocks and I want to be able to build with them. So I want to also build Ray's work skulk farm, which is going to require a lot of items as I need to construct basically a new Enderman farm in the end, requiring a tons of glass, chests, hoppers, building materials, some rails, cauldrons, and a healthy variety of redstone goodies we can use to build up the entire thing. The only item I still need is a block of honey, and I've got to wait for these bees to go back in their hives. And that sun is slowly dropping. How am I 4,076 days into this world, and I don't have a honey farm? I question myself sometimes. I do also need a little bit of lava that we can just grab right over here. And now I wait for the bees to go to sleep. Flipper snappers, we have a problem. Nope. No, is he going to find a home? I thought we have an extra bee. Please find a home. Maybe we can trade spots. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh bad idea, terrible idea, absolutely terrible idea. I just murdered a bee, but I did get a bottle of honey and a bee got out. Oh, it's all going wrong. Okay, new idea, new idea, bottle. Does this work? 
Oh, another one died. Before I murder anything else, I do have my block of honey. Oh, we still have plenty bees. Yeah, it's fine. Let's get out of this dimension just to be safe. We're out here. Step one, I need to reach the bottom of the void again. So if I drop lava right here, it should go all the way to the bottom. Looks like we're all the way at the bottom. So a little water right here should create cobble going all the way down and I can save the lava. And now we mine to the bottom. And then go very, very far away from the tree to here where I have a platform to build up the farm. This farm is pretty simple from a technical perspective with a collection system on the bottom that feeds into a single chest for easy access later on. Then a redstone clock that is just activating some pistons to push stone into the center from a stone generator on both sides. Boy, oh boy, it's a noisy one, but in the end, I'm just gonna be standing on this honey block that apparently clips through the campfire. Raiseworks is a genius. But now we need to actually fill in that whole stone generator point right up here. Er, if I can place blocks. Oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm in a bad place. Okay, safe place. But the lava should go right here in the middle. And the same on the other side. A few extra details here in the middle. We actually need to extend ourselves right over there, over here. Bam, bam, and bam, bam. Now to get these machines working, I believe I just need some redstone dust right along here. That one's going, and then I need this guy to be going as well. There's the stone generators built out, and here we need to actually extend ourselves up to where we're gonna actually be killing the Enderman. Middle killing chamber is all set up and lava to burn the pearls. And then we just set our coal catalyst thing right over there. With the base complete, we're using pointed dripstone to kill the mobs as mentioned. So I need to create a platform for the Endermen to spawn on and then fall into the middle to their doom. Endermen are spawning below and to lure them into the middle, we now need an Endermite. Oh, there we go. All right, buddy, got to name you. And then we get him in the cart. Perfect. Now the farm should start as soon as I do that. Yes, look at it. Look at him go. A light are going back on before I fall into the void accidentally. And he can live up there forever. Right, I might need some skull clocks to start this thing. I should still have a few up in the attic. I do not. Oh no. Please tell me this will work. Ah, one, two, three, four. Now, I believe I just need to make a connection point for this skull catalyst to move towards the middle here. And it is so noisy. But if I do that, oh no, oh no. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I made a big mistake. Oh, that's a massive mistake. It's working though. Things are spreading. Oh, it's working like I'm in trouble. I'm now in trouble. Oh God, <laughs> there's so many burning enemies here. I don't know what to do. I just, I need to place a block. I just concentrating on not looking at any enderman. <laughs> I'm losing a block right in here. Okay, new plan, new plan, because uh, I think we're gonna need one. We light up the top and stop the enderman from spawning until I can fix this. Oh my gosh, that was terrifying. <laughs> How's it all? Oh, there's so many endermen everywhere. Okay, we're getting out of here. New point of dripstone has been acquired. So I should be able to put a skulk block right there and point of dripstone in the middle. Okay, that is back to normal. Good news is if I can set it up, the farm is gonna work great. Right, I guess I just need to try this thing again. Let's get rid of the torches. Here goes nothing. It works, it works. Now if I just stand here and hold left click and I can even get the shriekers. Right, it's been about a minute. How many items are we talking about on this thing? Got some more oak leaves in here and I need to work my way around to the storage on the back. Oh, my sugar rocks. I was really hoping I didn't lose that. Well, not even a minute in and we've got all of that, which is amazing. I decided to hang around for another 20 minutes or so and gather up some more skulk materials to have on hand for building. And we've now got a full shulker box and some more of skulk blocks, as well as skulk veins and a few other things. And the hoe is about halfway done. But here we have another farm just floating in the void. That's the full list of things I had to do in game before moving to 1.20. Now for something a little controversial. Before every major update, I like to delete chunks in my Minecraft world to bring the new things closer to home. Now step one, make a backup. Step two, I opened up a program called MCA Selector and found my Minecraft world, which produces a 2D map. Oh, but I can see my house from here. But this is of the entire world and everywhere I have explored. Left clicking, I can select individual chunks or regions I want to delete and regenerate. If you do this yourself, be careful as you can delete your builds. But for me, I want to keep everything in my base and the surrounding 500 or so blocks. They're all going to be about the same. Now I do have some spots around the world I want to keep the same, like the ocean monument 
monument in here needs to stay. And actually, my mining desert itself, I want to keep in. Pretty much if I play inside of the area at all, mining resources or building, I don't want to delete it. I did make the backup, but I think I've got everything saved in here that I want to. The entire main base is there, and we've got the other things over here in just those two spots with the raid farm, ocean monument, mining desert. And just like that, we're going to delete 192,000 chunks. To boot up for the first time in Minecraft 1.20 on Hardcore Season 3. I do have a very important thing I need to be doing here first. Before we go out and look for any new things, hanging signs. Okay, but for real, I really, really want to find a sniffer egg. Meaning we get to explore some new old chunks and hopefully find some... What are they on? Sunken ships? Ocean room? that type of stuff i see a ruin what do we got down here oh it's a drone <gasps> suspicious gravel wait how do i make a brush let's see i think we need copper a stick and a feather yes our first brush is it just me or is that brush really big now for the very first time we gotta dig up some sussy gravel what do we get what do we get what do we get what do we get emerald gold nugget i think we're getting assured assured a plenty pottery shirt this does confirm that the new stuff is spawning inside of these chunks so we just gotta go find a sniffer <gasps> or hold up a minute here it's a cherry blossom biome oh this is so close to home oh i'm so excited right now hey advancement get wow oh my I gotta fix the leaves. Ah, there we go. Much more FWIP style. A little bushy. So I know for any YouTube members or Patreon supporters, I'll get the texture back uploaded and posted here real soon. But first, I gotta find a sniffer. Ooh, suspicious gravel. Looks like another shirt. It is the mourner. Buried treasure map. Is this where I can find my sniffer? Should be somewhere right down in here or here. No sniffer. I checked the wiki and I need to be in a warm ocean and finding suspicious sand. So maybe we're in the right place over here. No luck on the ruin yet, but there is an oak desert. This is a desert. Desert temple. Oh, 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 wait. I forgot they have the bonus secret rooms in them now. Is this one of them? Brand new shirt for an archer. I'm going to break so many of these accidentally. That's a diamond. Whoa. That's the whole extra new bonus room cleared out in here. And we actually got a cool amount of shirts out of it. Look at that. We'll find the sniffer soon, but it's a camel. Hey, buddy. I am so happy right now. Yeah, yeah, we are. Oh my God. We're moving. He's moving. We'll be back for the camel later. Found my first warm ocean and we've got sussy sand right over here. Is that, is that, it's a sniffer egg, a sniffer egg. I'm so happy. I do need a second though. Please, please, please. Ah, uh, coal. We've got our first sniffer egg. I need a second so we can breed them. Next ruins go. And I got another wooden hoe. No luck here. We've got another trying to hide in the coral reef and it's a child. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a sniffer? Another wooden hoe. Sniffer egg? Sniffer egg? <gasps> it is. It is. It is. Yes. Two sniffer eggs ready to go. And it's time to get home. Now, sniffers take about 20 minutes to hatch from their egg. But if you put them on top of moss blocks, they actually hatch in about 10 minutes. And ooh, those look so cool. I'm not sure if zombies stomp on these guys. So to help keep them safe, I want to first and foremost give them a fence. Now to be mother of whip, I will watch the eggs until they hatch after a distraction. I've been very excited about these. The decorated pot. But what we could do even more on top of that is take one of our sherds. Oh, and you could put it on different sides. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. And we can decorate them. It's a fishing rod. We've got ourselves a tree, a fishing rod, fishing rod, a diamond, archer, and the chest. Oh, they're cracking. Okay, little snifflets, you can come out. Quickly, we have to go over to the brick factory. We have this whole room waiting exactly for this moment. Oh, that one's cool. I'm in love. I I love this. I left for 30 seconds to place some pots down and my children hatched. Look at the baby sniffer. Oh my God, I love them so much. I never knew I wanted a semi truck in Minecraft, but we got it. We have to wait for them to grow up before we can do anything because we need torch flower seeds to breed them and also help them grow a little bit quicker, which they can only produce when they're adults. Which means since my children are safe, we can run around and put some pots in the world. Yeah, I, I'm i gonna like this update a lot. I do wish the big pots would stack, though. It's a little annoying without it. Hey, buddy, do we feel like growing? It's okay to take your time. Do you know it takes 40 minutes for snifflets to grow into sniffers? Well, I just learned that as it's now been 40 minutes. Ah, how'd you get out? No, no, get back in here. Can I put you on a lead? I can. Okay, that's good. No, okay, now you're stuck on the fence. Okay, big guy, come on inside. Back in here. I was really expecting them to find seeds quicker. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Oh, he's splooting. Our first seed. 
Oh, it's a petropod. Oh, good boy. Yeah, good boy. Good job. Now find torch flowers. The first pitcher pod we could put right here. First is a turnip and then it's a flower. It has been way too long, but we finally have two torch flower seeds, meaning we should have somewhere in the semi truck a sniffer egg. Nice. Then we have a third sniffer in an hour, but I think that's about all I got time for today, my friends. Let me know what you're most excited for in Minecraft 1.20, and I'll pick what we do next. Maybe building a massive armory and collecting the armor trims? Hmm, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the flip side.